It's a bombshell. Disgrace movie mogul Harvey Weinstein's 2020 rape conviction is being overturned because he didn't get a fair trial. The disgusting, predatory slot monster that is Harvey Weinstein just got his conviction overturned. We are following breaking news for you this hour. Uh, we want to take you to New York now where the state's highest court has overturned the rape conviction of movie producer Harvey Weinstein. The New York Court of Appeals finding the trial judge prejudiced Weinstein with improper rulings. So in this video, we're going to unwrap the spin and give you the exact reason why Harvey Weinstein conviction was thrown out. And I bet at the end of this video, you're going to agree it should have been thrown out. So now if you don't know who Harvey Weinstein is, he was Hollywood's mega producer. Now, it's well documented that he used that power and influence to have young, attractive women sleep with him. Now, in Hollywood, this was an open secret. Everyone knew. As an example, here is a clip from 2005 where actress Courtney Love warns people about Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein invites you to a private party in four seasons. Love tweeted Saturday saying, although I wasn't one of the victims, or one of his victims, I should say, I was eternally banned by CAA for speaking out against Harvey Weinstein. Now, eventually women started speaking out in droves. Over 100 women accused Harvey Weinstein of either some type of sexual harassment, sexual misconduct, or even sexual assault. I just want to thank my agent, Kevin Uvain, and God, Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Harvey Weinstein, who believed in us and made this movie. He was one of the most powerful men in the film industry, thanked by some of the biggest A-listers in Hollywood. Thank you so much, the Academy and Harvey Weinstein. Harvey, thank you for killing whoever you had to kill to get me up here today. But in 2017, his world came crashing down after bombshell reports in the New York Times and The New Yorker claimed he had a history of preying on women. In the months that followed, a list of stars would speak out with their own stories, including Angelina Jolie, Mira Sorvino, and Selma Hayek, some accusing the movie mogul of sexual harassment. Others, like Rose McGowan, claimed he raped her. What does justice look like to you? Bars. The accusations against Weinstein propelling the Me Too movement and prompting the creation of Time's Up, women in Hollywood banding together to stand up to sexual misconduct. Now, with all these accusations of misconduct, Harvey Weinstein's life was essentially destroyed. And because some of these allegations were criminal allegations, the state of New York and California started investigating. The New York authorities struck first. They arrested Harvey Weinstein on allegations of sexual assault against three women. It's a scene many of his accusers never thought they'd see. Harvey Weinstein, a man used to walking red carpets, now in handcuffs, doing a perp walk. To lure young women into situations where he was able to violate them sexually. His smile vanished in court as he was formally charged with two counts of rape and one of a criminal sexual act. It's been seven months since his behavior, long rumored in the industry, became national headlines. So it seemed like a foregone conclusion that Harvey Weinstein was gonna be convicted of sexual assault in New York because look at how many people had said he'd done it to them. Now, even though we all believe that Harvey Weinstein is guilty of all these accusations, in the United States legal system, it's not about accusations. You gotta prove your case. It's not about what you know, but what you can prove. You got one problem though, Jake, you got no witnesses. Who you f***ing witnesses, huh? Roger, Smiley, you think my troops are gonna help you? It's not what you know, it's what you can prove. Now, when it comes to the Harvey Weinstein case, there were actually no witnesses. It was just really a he said, she said. He was saying that the acts were consensual. They were saying that the acts were not consensual. Now, when New York State prosecutors brought the case, they had major problems with their victims. See, the state charged Harvey Weinstein with assaulting three women, but these women were not good witnesses. The reason why is because after their alleged sexual assault by Harvey Weinstein, they continued to have consensual sex with Harvey Weinstein for years after the alleged assaults. But all three women had, over different periods, an ongoing relationship with Weinstein. Two of them continued to have sex with Weinstein consensually for years after the alleged sexual assaults. They wrote to Weinstein saying that they loved him. And this formed the backbone of Weinstein's defense, that this was all consensual. Now, the complainants argued they did all of this out of fear. Harvey Weinstein was a powerful man. Mann told the court she never meant what she wrote, saying nice things, 
only because she was afraid of the producer. Now, Harvey Weinstein's legal team essentially admitted that, yes, Harvey Weinstein's behavior was unethical, but it wasn't illegal. Yes, he used his power to sleep with beautiful women, but that's not illegal. And that these women who were having consensual sex for years after their alleged allegations are now just trying to destroy his career. Jump on the gravy train. Now let's step back for a second. I want you to play juror on this case. Hearing the facts as alleged, would you as a juror believe that Harvey Weinstein sexually assaulted these women beyond a reasonable doubt? Would there be reasonable doubt in your mind if the victims are continuing to have consensual sex for years after their alleged assault and then send favorable messages talking about how much they love the guy even years after the alleged assault? Prosecutors were looking down the barrel of a not guilty verdict. So so New York prosecutors decided to take a chance. Let's see if we can bring in some evidence of all these other women who said that Harvey Weinstein assaulted them. And if we can make Harvey Weinstein seem like a serial assaulter, then it's going to be more likely that the jury is going to believe that he assaulted these women because he's done it before in the past. This is known as propensity evidence. You may have heard the term once a thief, always a thief. This was the prosecutor's strategy. But, and there's a huge but here, this strategy is highly illegal in the state of New York. Now, I think this is best understood with an example. Let's take Bob, for instance. Bob has a history of armed robbery, and he has five armed robbery convictions in the past. Now, after there's an armed robbery in Bob's neighborhood, police come and question Bob about the armed robbery. Now, police have no evidence that Bob was actually involved, but because Bob has five felony convictions for armed robbery, it's a good place to start. Now, Bob is eventually arrested and prosecuted, and during the trial, the prosecutor doesn't have any evidence that shows Bob actually committed this armed robbery. But the government says we don't need evidence that Bob actually committed this armed robbery. He's committed five armed robberies in the past, so that means he must have committed this new armed robbery. Now, the jury convicts Bob of armed robbery, and Bob now has a life sentence. But now the question should be apparent. How do we know Bob actually committed this one? Just because he committed those five armed robberies in the past doesn't mean he committed this one. There's no evidence of that. Now, this is why New York doesn't allow this type of evidence to come in. Now, in the New York trial, the trial judge allowed this type of evidence to be used against Harvey Weinstein. Instead of once a thief, always a thief, it's once a sexual assaulter, always a sexual assaulter. So think of it this way. If you took all of the women who have terrible stories about Harvey Weinstein, they could fill a courtroom of their own, mm. women like Ashley. However, most of those women, like Ashley, were not eligible to stand at the center of a New York criminal trial. The acts didn't take place here in New York. They took place too long ago. A lot of it was sexual harassment, as you experienced, and not the kind of criminal violent acts that can land you in jail. So prosecutors were left with only two women at the center of the New York case. Both of them admitted to having had consensual sex with Weinstein, which juries will sometimes reject. They'll say it's too blurry, it's too complicated. So to bolster their case, prosecutors brought in additional witnesses. Women who had experienced terrible things at the hands of Weinstein gave searing testimony, but it was controversial legally because the classic rule of criminal court, of course, is that the evidence should only pertain to the acts that are under scrutiny in court. And so when Weinstein was convicted, it seemed like a triumph for Me Too because he was convicted with a chorus of women's voices, but that also became the avenue for his appeal. So Harvey Weinstein appealed and the court said, let's pump the brakes because his rights were violated and this conviction was a sham by allowing other women to testify to events that didn't even lead to any criminal charges, they prejudiced the jury against Weinstein. Wednesday, prosecutors called two former waitresses to the stand, hoping to use their words to show he's a predator. Both of the women today were crying from the stand. All of their tears just laid out right there in front of the jury. You could see some of the jurors visibly reacting to all of that. The appeal court decided the accused has a right to be held to account only for the crime charged and thus allegations of prior bad acts may not be admitted against them for the sole purpose of establishing their propensity for criminality. Translation, stick to the alleged crime at hand. You can't prove Weinstein broke the law by accusing him of breaking it some other time. This is where, according to New York's highest court, both the prosecution and the judge 
went wrong. Now, full disclosure, the judge who actually wrote this opinion is Judge Jenny Rivera. Now, for full disclosure, I personally know Judge Jenny Rivera. She was a colleague when I worked as a law school professor in New York. Now, even though Judge Rivera is a liberal judge, she is extremely fair when it comes to these legal issues and puts that aside to make the right decision. And as she writes here in the Weinstein case, the right to a fair trial is a fundamental liberty secured by the 14th Amendment. New York's Court of Appeals handing down the 4-3 decision citing egregious errors by the judge overseeing the trial back in 2020, saying the trial court erroneously admitted testimony of uncharged, alleged prior sexual acts against persons other than the complainants of the underlying crimes adding that testimony of uncharged crimes at the trial was unnecessary to establish Weinstein's intent and served only to establish defendants' propensity to commit the crimes charged. Weinstein's legal team happily surprised. We knew that Harvey Weinstein did not get a fair trial. Now, I know there are going to be some people who look at this video and say, Nate's a supporter of Harvey Weinstein, which is absolutely not the case. But... I think this is a lesson for us all. We can't change our values because we don't like the person. We can't change our values because we think the person is guilty of something. Guilt must be proven. It can't just be assumed. Now I understand Me Too is a serious problem and I also understand that people want to do something about it, but violating someone's due process rights is not the way to do it. And at this point, the Me Too movement essentially is in shambles. The two most prominent faces of the Me Too movement, Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein, their convictions have been overturned. And the reason why their convictions were overturned is because the mob wanted them to be convicted. So the government did everything possible, even stretching the truth, even violating their rights to obtain those convictions. And because of all that, we're kind of back where we started. Bill Cosby's conviction was thrown out. We're coming on the air with breaking news about Bill Cosby. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court has overturned the 83-year-old actor's sex assault conviction, and he could be released from prison within hours. And now Harvey Weinstein's conviction is thrown out. It's a bombshell. Disgraced movie mogul Harvey Weinstein's 2020 rape conviction is being overturned. Now, you're going to hear a lot of the media blaming the courts. The courts are bad. The courts did this. The courts are wrong. But the fact of the matter is, is the courts aren't wrong. In both of these cases, it was obvious that both these men may be horrible people but they were essentially railroaded by the system because the mob wanted to see them get convicted. And the courts bent to the mob's will. They convicted these men even by violating their constitutional rights. So now at the end of the day, the law is not about being right. It's about doing right, how you get to the right conclusion. And if you have to violate people's constitutional rights to get there, no matter what the person did, it's never going to be okay. It's never going to be right. Now, before we get out of here, I want to ask you a question. It's time for you to play juror. The facts are simple. Two women are claiming that Harvey Weinstein assaulted them, but then after that alleged assault, they continued to have consensual sex with him for years, even writing loving messages to him years after the alleged sexual assault. Do you believe, based on those raw facts, that a jury would be able to find Harvey Weinstein guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of sexually assaulting these women. Now, obviously this case is horribly complex. And if you think the court got it right, let me know in the comment section. And as always, tell me where I'm wrong in the comment section, because I think the facts without the propensity evidence, if they're just out there for everyone to see, I think it's extremely hard to get a conviction against Harvey Weinstein because most people won't understand why someone who was just sexually assaulted by someone would continue to have that type of relationship, a sexual relationship, after the assault for years. It's just something that would be hard to overcome for any prosecutor. Don't forget to let me know how you feel in the comment section and like, share, subscribe, do all that great YouTube stuff. My name is Ate the Lawyer and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.